The Purchase Orders module, which is available in Sage 50 Accounts Professional, makes it easy to create and manage orders that you place with your suppliers. It fully integrates with your suppliers and also your Products and Services module. Orders can be printed and emailed and you can also customise the format of these to suit your business requirements. For example, you can add a company logo, trading terms, website information, as well as changing font styles and colours to match your company brand. The basic purchase order process is to enter the order, place it on order, and then receive the goods. You can then, if required, update the ledgers, so it effectively generates an invoice and updates that to the supplier account based on the order and what's being delivered. So let's have a look at how you enter a purchase order. So from the navigation bar, click Purchase Orders. And then from the toolbar at the top, click New. Now if you're familiar with entering invoices in the Invoices and Credits module or Sales Orders, you'd be very familiar with the, the, the sort of the layout of the product purchase order. So the first thing to specify is the date. So that defaults to the current program date. We'll just accept that for this example. And then we need to specify the supplier that we're ordering from. So we can select them from the drop down. If it's a brand new supplier, we can click new and then complete the details, click save, and then we'd be able to select them from the list. So we're just going to choose this first supplier, Concept Stationery Supplies. Click OK and then the name of the supplier and also the address appear in the top left corner. Now if we're using the project costing option we can link this purchase order to a project and also assign it to a cost code if required. We're just going to leave that blank in this example. Then in the main body of the purchase order we need to specify what we're ordering. So we'll specify the product code, the description gets pulled through, default quantity and also the unit price as well. We, obviously we can amend these values if required. So we'll just change the quantity to 10. We'll leave the price set to £2 per unit. The net calculates automatically for the line as does the VAT. And obviously we've got tools at the bottom. Now we could, if we wanted to, continue entering additional items. But we'll just stick with a very basic purchase order of one item Right, just before we save it, we've got other options at the top, so we've got an order details tab where we can enter delivery address information. We might be placing an order with our supplier and want it delivered direct to our customer. Or if we've got different branches of our company, we might choose which branch we want that delivered to. We can also specify footer details and on there we can specify things like carriage charges and also settlement terms. The deliveries tab that's blank at the moment and that will be updated when we show the stock or the goods being delivered. So for the time being we'll go back to details, click save and we're then prompted do you want to place this order on order now? So we can either place it on order now or place it on order later. So let's click order now. We're then prompted do you want to print this order? I'm going to click no on this occasion. Remember you can print or email your orders and also you can amend the format as well so that they're a bit more personal to your company, maybe picking up on your company brand, the colours, the fonts etc. So I'm just going to click no, we'll ignore it for the time being and that's it done. That's how simple it is to create an order. So if we now close and we're back to the purchase orders list. So there's the order that we've just entered. You'll see in the on order column it says on order so we've actually placed that order with our supplier. Now the next step is to receive the goods. Now when we receive the goods, if we're receiving it in full we can go via receive deliveries. And what that will do, it will just book everything in. If we only receive part of the shipment we would go in via amend deliveries and then we can say right well of this order we've received maybe six of the the ten items that we've we've ordered. In this occasion we'll just click receive deliveries to say that we've actually received it in full. 
So it says you've selected one purchase order. It prompts me, do you wish to update stock and record a delivery for the selected orders? So if we click yes, it then generates a goods received note. And again, we can print it or we can print it later. Let's just print later. And then in the delivered column, it now says complete. So at this stage, it basically it's updated the products and services list. So if we just have a look at products and services, we'll now see the quantity and stock of this item is 10. That's the 10 that we actually just ordered and have shown has been delivered. As far as the supplier is concerned, nothing on the account yet. Now that occurs when we go to purchase orders, we highlight the order and we've got an option to update ledgers. So if we click update ledgers, brings up the details of what's been delivered from the order so far that we got selected. So we've only got one order selected in the background. It tells us that we've ordered 10, we've had 10 delivered so far. There's nothing outstanding. We haven't invoiced any of them yet, but we've still to be invoiced for 10. So we're going to show you how to update an invoice from this item. Now there could be obviously lots of products listed here. Obviously ours is nice and simple. So still with that item selected, we click update. We've got the details there, so it brings through a batch supplier invoice. So we don't need to go and enter it manually. We can do it via the purchase orders update ledgers option. So just make sure the details are correct. If they are, click save. We get a message about project costing. We haven't got this one linked to a project costing, so we can continue. So we just click yes. And we'll see in the posted column, we've now got a Y. And also, if you go to suppliers, we've now got an outstanding balance for the order that we've just updated. So that's how easy it is to enter your purchase orders and process them in Sage accounts.